Hi, let's go through a couple of examples where we have to add or subtract numbers that are written in scientific notation. Before we get going, let's have a look at uh, a number that is written in scientific notation and just think a little bit about the two different parts of a number that's written this way. So you might remember from earlier on in the course, scientific notation is written with a power of 10 at the end. And so the first part of this number, 5.687, this part of the number is called the digits. The second part is our power of 10. So times 10 and the negative 3, and that's our power of 10. So when we're dealing with numbers that are in scientific notation, we're always looking at that power of 10. And if we're adding or subtracting, we're really hoping that the power of 10 is the same. Because if it is, that makes our calculation really easy. We can just go ahead and add or subtract the digits. If the powers of 10 aren't the same, that's okay. It's not the end of the world, but we do have to adjust them or adjust one of them so that both the numbers have matching powers of 10. And then we can go ahead and add and subtract them. We'll deal with that a little bit later. Let's first look at some examples where the powers of 10 are the same and think about how we go ahead with those calculations. So here's an example. This is the same one in the lesson. We're going to work through it together. I've got two numbers, both written in scientific notation, and I'm going to subtract. First thing I want to do is look at my powers of 10 and ask myself if they are the same. 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 9 are the same. That's great. My life just got easier. I can go ahead now and simply subtract the digits. So when your powers of 10 are the same, you can go ahead and subtract your digits. Let's do this over here to the side. So I've got 5.67 subtract 2.1. Okay, we can do the math. Bring down our 7. 6 minus 1 is 5 and 5 minus 2 is 3. So 3.57 is our answer here. This is a subtraction. So before I go any further, I want to think a little bit about what my rules are for sig figs. And when I'm adding and subtracting, we have rule number one that we need to follow. We always round our answer to the least number of decimal places from the question. So looking at our numbers that we used really quickly, we can see that the first value has two decimal places, and the value that we subtracted, the second value, has only one decimal place. So our answer cannot be more precise than the values that we used. So for this question right here, we're going to have to round our answer to one decimal place. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay. When I'm rounding, I'm looking to the next number. Seven is a big and larger number than five, so we can go ahead and round that up to 3.6. And we're almost done. We just don't want to forget about our power of 10. So now we're going to go ahead and bring that times 10 to the 9 down into our answer. And there's our final answer. It's got the right number of sig figs, and the math was pretty easy to do. Let's do another example. OK, here I've got 9.1 times 10 to the negative 4 plus 9.56 times 10 to the negative 4. First thing I'm looking at is my powers of 10. Are they the same? And they are. That's great. So now I can just go ahead and deal with the digits. Here's my digits, and this time I'm doing an addition. I'll put my addition sign in because I scratched it out. Let's go ahead and add those numbers together. We've got the 9.1 plus 9.56, and we're going to add those numbers together. So we're going to bring down our 6 and 1 plus 5 is 6, and 9 plus 9 is 18. Okay, great. Here's a good example um, of, a, of an answer that is not going to be written correctly in scientific notation when we bring down that exponent. I could go ahead and bring down that exponent right now if I wanted to. 10 times 10 to the negative 4. But this is not written in proper scientific notation. I do want to change that. But before I do, I need to think about my sig fig rules. This, you always want to think about your sig fig rules directly after you've done the subtraction or the addition. So here, remember our rule with adding or subtracting, we are limited to the least precise number in our question. So that means that 
this first value has one decimal place, and the second value had two decimal places, so we need to have one decimal place in our answer, which means that I'm going to round my number right there at the first decimal place. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to round up the 6, and I'm going to have 18.7 as my answer, and I can tack on my power of 10 times 10 to the negative 4, and now I'm almost done. There's nothing wrong with my answer in terms of its accuracy, but we want to write this in proper scientific notation. It's got the right number of sig figs. Now let's go ahead and just write that number uh, so that we, we only have one digit in front of the decimal place. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and move over my decimal place one space to the left. So 1.87. And remember that when you move the decimal place to the left, you're making that number smaller. So you need to compensate by making your power of 10 bigger. So if I move it once to the left, I'm going to move it. Uh, I'm going to add one um, power of 10 to my uh, to my power of 10. Okay. So in other words, I'm, it's like I'm, I'm multiplying by, by 10 here. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Instead of 10 to the negative 4, my exponent is going to be 10 to the negative 3. 10 to the negative 3 is a bigger number than 10 to the negative 4. So I've compensated correctly, and I can go ahead and report that as my final answer.